Um, so what I would do is I would wake up in the morning and I would do a couple RX questions in the morning. You know, 10, 15, you know, 5 if I'm waiting for something in line. Like any chance I got, I did a couple RX questions. And then I wouldn't even look at you all. I saw people doing you all the time saying, oh, it's so awesome, I love you all. I'm like, okay, good luck, because you're going to get through like three and you're going to be like, it sucks. So, you know, stay true to yourself. There's going to be a lot of people that are saying, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing so great. You know, I've got an A on this. And just focus on yourself. Because you know yourself better. Like, you know yourself better than anyone else. So, getting up and doing the RX questions is the best advice I can give you because you're not going to get through your world. There's a lot of questions on your world. And save that for your step one dedicated time, okay? Um, and then I used first aid for step one. So, I tried to get through the whole book. I, I was way too, I don't know, ambitious. Um, so, what I would do, I just kind of would read through as much as I could that day, but then also making sure I got through rough stuff. Because I always say to people, you can't do comp for Ross. A lot of my semester failed fourth because they were so worried about comp. If you don't pass Ross, you don't do comp. You don't do step one. So I'm not trying to scare you, but just saying, you know, really making sure that you're doing the Ross stuff first, making sure that you pass Ross, and then the comps next. Um, so that's what I would kind of do is just wake up, try and read as much as I could for step one. Uh, pathoma for some pathology. Do you guys use Pathoma? Have you guys heard of Pathoma? Okay, I've seen some head nods, awesome. Um, and then also some RX questions throughout the day. And I really felt that that was awesome. I felt very um, prepared for it. We're really hard on ourselves. And if I give myself one piece of advice to, to first semester MF, second semester MF, third and fourth, I would say be easy on yourselves. Honestly and truthfully, if I could tell one person I had to leave the room today, it's, it's okay. You know, if your mini didn't go as well, it's okay. You know, first semester you're gonna repeat, no one cares. Just, you know, the fact that you kind of showed up that next semester and you're still here, I would rather sit across from a position like that than anyone else. That you want it, you know? And I think that's when you kind of lose sight of all these numbers. So that's kind of one piece is just, it's okay, you know? You're going to have these failures, you know? Did I agree? Okay. And if you don't pass it, it's okay. Um, step one. All right, we're inching them off. Basic sciences are done. Comps over. You've passed. You're on this guy, and this is my nemesis. So, I only did three things. So who knows the UFAP method? UFAP? I didn't know it either. Someone wrote me and I was like, I don't know what they're doing. So it is UWorld First Aid and Pathoma. So it's called UFAP. So no idea, so that's just what people use, I guess, on the online forums. People are saying UFAP, UFAP, UFAP. That's what I did. I did UWorld, um, I did it twice through, and that's it. I think I started doing my incorrects, and I was like, this is overload, so no. So you roll twice through. I definitely suggest getting through twice. The first time you do it, it's going to be slow and painful. The second round, this is kind of when you get up your stamina, um, making sure that you guys can sit for long hours at a time, which I know you guys can, but it's a whole world when you're sitting for eight hours straight um, and thinking every single waking second for that exam. So what I would do, I'd wake up every day, I'd do it in four block increments. I would do from 8 to noon, I would either read or I would do U-World blocks. So I would do four U-World blocks, have a break for lunch, then from like maybe 1.30 to 5.30 or like 2 to 6, I would either review those blocks or I would read more in first aid. There's a little bit of pathoma kind of thrown in there as well. And I literally did that for three months. Sucked. Did they? Trust me, it sucks. And you guys know, I mean, basic science sucks. So step one is, is no different. It's just the questions are a little bit more complex because they want you to see if you can critically think, right? And it's the more tertiary questions where you need to know the diagnosis and then you need the treatment and then maybe like an adverse effect. So it's not crazy. But I think, honestly, the questions I thought were actually quite fair from, from you world in my first aid. So that's kind of what I did every single day for three months. Um, and then every, like, I think three weeks or so, or maybe every month, I would just do an MBA exam. I just kind of see where I am and base it. And I think that's the biggest advice I want to give you guys is you need to have some way to base your progress. Because if you're doing the same thing every single day and you're not getting better, you need to switch something. So I would definitely have an MBA exam. Almost, I would say almost, if I could do it again, probably every three weeks to see how you're doing. Um, this is what I wish I knew. So, one thing I did not know is I did not do eight blocks straight, which I probably should have. 
Is that eight? Yeah, that's eight blocks of six, 60 minute, 40 questions. Yeah, so I wish I did a couple days, probably like a week out, I would want to do a full eight block day. That's the one thing I wish I did. And then maybe like that Monday, let's say my exam was on a Friday and I, I, uh, it was Monday, I would probably do another eight block day. Just to, just to what it feels like to sit for that long. Because it truly is, I was on block five and I was like, I'm dying. So that's kind of what I wish I knew was to practice the endurance a little bit more. So what you can do is you can like do an MBE, which I think is like five hours, and then maybe do like three more blocks after that. I know a lot of people that did that as well. Um, that's definitely something that I wish I knew. Um, a lot of x-ray histology images. I did not know this at all. Um, I know you all had some x-rays and some histo histology. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so just honestly, Pathoma does a great job with this. I definitely would just you know, really look at Pathoma, look at the histology images, um, look at some more x-rays because I, I think I had like honestly like 15 x-ray questions. So I was like, yeah, I did not want to talk this at all. Um, and then go on with confidence. Um, you guys have done so much work up to this point, right? We're pretending we're on step one. You have done all the work. You've done all the basic sciences, right? So it's really making sure that you're going in with confidence, and that goes a long way. Um, there were times where I had a lot of doubt, and I did really bad on block. And there were times where I just like fake it to make it, and I did really well on that 40 question block. So I really think that confidence and having that mental positivity is really goes a long way. All right, clinical sciences. I just threw this up here. I know it's kind of like a little bit busy, a little bit more words than I like. Um, but this is kind of like what happens after basic science and what it does right now. So you have the IMF, um, which is in Miramar, Florida. So that's no other track site. IMF is always in Miramar, Florida every single year. There are seven start dates. So do not feel rushed to take step one at any point. There are a lot of start dates. And it's only six weeks. Um, but it's six weeks long and it, you're pretty much paired with uh, a physician. So I was at a neurology clinic, some people are in cardiology, some people are, um, it's all outpatient, so there's nothing in the hospital, but it's, it's more sort of kind of get your feet wet to, to see what it's like after sitting in all day at the desk to talking to people, right? It's really good clinical science here. Like you guys get lots of practice for CS, you guys, I don't know, is SEP, IEPs, um, what is it? ESP, that was close. Okay, so yeah, you had that. And so by the time you get to IMF, you're, you're kind of ready. Um, but again, if people that kind of need that extra experience, I think is really good. So then after your IMF, you have your six core rotations. So you have your internal surge, OBI, your site, your disease, and family. And then internal and surgery are 12 weeks, those are the big guys. So depending on where you go for your kind of track site, um, the way that the rotation that you have is going to be different. So for my 12 weeks, I had four weeks of bariatric surgery, four weeks of general surgery, and then four weeks of trauma surgery. That was my husband went off, but it was off at the same time. And then after every single core, you have a shelf exam. And do not take these lightly. And I know I'm talking like, if you're in first semester right now, this is like three years down for you. But I'm just kind of giving you these little tidbits to put in your little notebook, so when you get to this point, you actually have an idea of what's going on. Because for each core rotation, you do have a shelf. Do not take those lightly. They are actually kind of brutal. Um, I think it, it depends on, like an A is a 68 and a 70, which is like, it's really easy to get like a good grade. But I know a lot of people have actually failed them, and I don't know why. I think they're, they're so excited to be done, and like they're in clinical sciences, and they don't want to study anymore. You definitely still need to study, definitely. Um, I don't think a fail shows up when you're trying to skip for the shelves. The shelves are pretty much just to help you study for CK. Um, and definitely take, take those very seriously because they are kind of tricky. Um, and then in your fourth year, you have 36 weeks, which ends up being like nine months that um, you have to do in the fourth year. So hopefully that helps a little bit of like after basic sciences, where you go. Um, and in between here is your CS and your CK, what you're doing. That's it. Um, CK, that's the um, I felt the shelf exams were amazing, and again, this is actually like years for you guys, but this is, again, write it down, have it in the back pocket for when it comes, you guys are ready. So all I did was you roll, and then I reviewed those, all the incorrects that I wrote down in like a little tiny one book, and then I had that one book every time before I went to bed, I just kind of read of like things that I'm still kind of weak on. Um, the only other little thing that I did was, it's called Step 2 Secrets, it's amazing. By the time you guys get to this point, it will be probably on like version 50. But they, they updated so much in the year. 
So what I would do is just have a little tiny stuff to secrets book. I wish I had a picture of it. It's really tiny. It can actually fit in your white coat. Um, and then that's all I did. And I know it took six weeks to do it because I really felt confident that my shelf exam study was really strong. I did well on all the shelves. So I just took dedicated six weeks and then just busted it out because I could not do three months like I did for step one. And then just again, and the exam to kind of track your progress. And I kind of said this too. So your shelf exam will have one solid resource for CK, which is my secrets and my U-Roll. And then a lot of the questions were like next best step. So like you have this patient, they have an ailment, what would you do next? What kind of imaging modality would you do? And that's kind of the question they ask. And then I don't know if I should say this, but I'm saying it, is that they practice MBA exams have repeat questions, like verbatim. So just remember this when the time comes. Alright, this is the match. Dun 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 we're all wanting to do. So these are just terms that I want you guys to know. And this down for you guys, so you guys kind of have an idea when you get to this point. So ERAS is your online application. So this is kind of where you put your pictures. This is my picture of Dr. JC Penny. Do it, you guys are done it's awesome. You upload your CV, upload your extra curriculars. This is kind of like the online application that forms your CV, okay? The NRMP is the match. So that's kind of the algorithm website where you rank the program, they rank you, and then by this math, math, mathematical algorithm, you get matched, right? Interview season is October to Jan. Your rank list is through February of that match year, and then you match in hopefully March. Um, I had a lot of questions actually, how much am I spending? They didn't say it like that. How much does Red Sea cost, right? Is that a lot? It's 26 bucks per program, which I think is a rip off, but it is what it is. So if you're applying to 200 programs, if you, just the application alone is like 5200. And Ross says to apply to 200 programs, depending on your, your right, I know, depending on like, your steps forward, so you can apply to less or you can apply to more. I know one of my good friends applied to 450 programs. It's like, I don't have that money. Like, no, I applied to 150. Am I crazy? Maybe. Should I apply to more? Sometimes I think about it. But I'm Canadian. My steps are okay. I want to do family. I don't want to stay in America. I thought I had a pretty good shot. I'm not going to get 100, my 150th pick. I hope not. Man. So that's just me. That's just how much I had to weigh. Like, how confident I am in my application. How much, how many programs should I apply to? And again, this is four or maybe even two years for you guys. So I want to just kind of give you guys a little information for that. So, and then again, if anyone has a residency that you guys get, you have to fly. There's a lot of them that actually pay for a hotel, which is nice of them, but they you can pay your own way to get there. Amazing. If you guys follow me on Instagram, I post a too much. But this is Domi, when you found her uh, in Dominica. And as you can tell, she was kind of in rough shape. She had a little cut on her nose. She was very thin. She had ticks, everything filled in both her paws and her ears. She had a blood infection. She probably was like near death for the next couple of days. And then this is her now. She's fat and chubby. She's so cute. She's tick free, blood infection free. Um, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> um, yeah, so she lives with us in Dominica. So. That's it for my presentation. I know that was fast, guys. I just really want to get like all that information to your minds so you guys have that. So. Okay. All right, so this is the chance that you guys have me at your disposal of any questions that you guys have. Let's say I didn't cover or any specifics or anything. So don't be shy.